Good evening. Hello. This Thursday, of course, is St. Patrick's Day, and we all know what that means. The St. Patrick's Day Parade, the river dyed green, and music, lots of music. The folk tunes, the fiddling, and step dancing are national treasures of Ireland. Here's a look at some of the people in Chicago who prize those treasures dearly. Liz Carroll is from Chicago, Mick Maloney from Philadelphia. They performed together the other night at Holstein's on North Lincoln for the love of an Irish chick. Liz started fiddling at age 10, making the same music her mom's father made in Ireland. Maloney grew up in County Limerick, learning the Irish folk music as musicians centuries before had learned it. About 10 or 20 miles away were a great storehouse of musicians, pipers, fiddlers, accordion players, flute players. And I went out there on weekends, uh, particularly in my late teens, and just learned tunes from them by listening and by tape recording them and hanging out with them, most, much in the same ways they'd learned from people before then. Many of the songs they played are timeless, reels like Bunker Hill and Old Bush, well-worn tunes made fresh by an Irish musician's improvising and ornamentation. Young Irish man, an Ulster born, did pride of freedom, warmth and hope. Liz Carroll says the Irish folk tradition is strong in Chicago, thanks mainly to 40 or 50 musicians, people of her parents' generation who came here originally from Ireland. Not that many young people play, she says, but she's doing her part. I teach the fiddle as well, you know, and uh, I feel like, um, well, it's beginning to be around that time where there's no immigration coming from Ireland anymore like there was like back in the 50s or even the early 60s. And so what you've got now are not um, first-generation children, but you've got second and third. And uh, it's kind of nice to get the music to them because you feel like um, you'll have someone to play with later on. Like Liz Carroll, Michael Flatley is doing his part to keep the Irish tradition strong. His grandmother danced in Ireland. His mother was a dance teacher there. Now, Michael teaches hornpipes, reels, and the Kilkenny races to 300 students in the Chicago area, including the ones here at the Killarney Castle Restaurant in Palos Hills. Shoulders back, arms steady at the sides, knees together, toes out. Look as if you're dancing in the air. That's what it takes to be a good Irish dancer. Michael Flatley is one of the best. In 1975, at age 16, he became the first American to win the all-world Irish dancing championship in Ireland. During his competition days, before he was teaching, he won 86 consecutive first place dancing championships. He once appeared at the same dance festival as dancers by the name of Barishnikov and Nuria. And his students, like Kathy Bolin, think he's okay too. What makes Michael Flatley a good teacher? Oh God, everything. What, I mean, tell, tell me, I mean, I don't know, well, tell me. Well, just the way he dances, you see him dancing there? Mm -hmm. Wow. Irish dancing is an alive and ever-changing art form for Michael. When he and his brother Patrick dance, they do what they call a progressive style of Irish dancing. Some of the old steps, but many new rhythm patterns, unique and all their own. Like I said, I danced with uh, Mikhail Baryshnikov and uh, Rudolf Nureyev and some of the great tap dancers. Um, and they've all been kind of amazed about this type of dancing. They've never seen it before. It's so many different movements. Michael has invented many steps, including the click, the click of the heels in the air. The newest version is the double click. It's a back and forward. We have another one. <laughs> <laughs> Michael 
Michael sent 17 students to the U.S. Irish Dancing Championships Thanksgiving weekend in Dayton, Ohio. 14 qualified for the World Championships to be held Easter weekend in Ireland. Colleen Mulhern was one of the 14, here practicing a set dance, the Piper Through the Meadow. Denise Garvey was good enough for the World Championships, too, despite her modesty. You pretty good at it? Sorta. Many of the girls say they will stop taking dancing lessons once they reach high school, what with homework, sports, and boys to think about. But students like Sue O'Gorman say just knowing the dances will mean something. It'll give you some kind of meaning that you are like more Irish, and it'll um, make you want to put your kids into dancing too, to have them go on with the Irish tradition. You could be working at a job and not see Irish music or dancing for 10 years, and then you could be in a bar one day having a drink, and if the music comes on the jukebox, you'll start tapping your foot and you'll start wanting to dance again. It's a thing about that. <laughs> Michael Flatley says his students will be dancing at 18 shows this week. On St. Patrick's Day, Holsteins will feature Irish musicians Shara and Fedarim. And I'll be in my usual spot on St. Patrick's Day, beating on the drums with the Shannon Rovers Pipe Band. We'll be heading up the St. Patrick's Day.